like how they put fucking 12 minutes of black on the end of that a bumper. I need to trim that stuff off. Yeah. I, I did uh, alpha, alpha stuff to it. Ooh, blending. Welcome to the production podcast. It's not a bad uh, idea. Well, this, hey, this is all pre-show, right? It's not noon yet. Yeah, we're, not, we're not up yet, right? Nah. nah. Well, I mean, we are. We you hear us. Live. You're up and the mics are live. I should have warned you. Oh. Yeah. But go no ahead. Music? What other, what what are other things cool music? Yeah. I, I, music is You're a kill man. <laughs> cool music. Uh, Did you not use my kill music? Uh, it's all the same cool music. Oh, man. Are you sure you don't want something to take for your back? I got it. I got it. We're good. What did you do this weekend that yeah, hurt? Did you hurt yourself Good again or question. Is it the same hurt? You saw over you went and saw people play Overwatch. I'm pretty sure I drank so hard I threw my back out. <laughs> not not joking. <laughs> but doing what exactly? Uh, celebrating Bruce's birthday. Yeah. Oh. Welcome welcome to a... I didn't throw my back out though. <laughs> and you're <laughs> and older. I drank, I drank a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a birthday bowl of dude soup. Alright. It's uh, Bruce it was Bruce's birthday. It's also Sonic's birthday. Alright. Whatever that means. Why is it knuckles, knuckles, and knuckles? <laughs> So, yeah, I can. What do you need me to do? You tell me what to do, and I'll do it. It'll take way longer for me to tell you than to just look at it myself. (laughs) Um, I just needed to make sure that the game wasn't super loud, and it's not. Um, so we're playing Knuckles, Knuckles, and Knuckles, starring Um, Knuckles. Why was it called that? Man from Knuckles, because it's a, it's a mod. Welcome to Knuckle Ball, dude, soup. It's a mod for Sonic 3 that replaces everything with Knuckles. Um, All the bad guys? (laughs) Yeah. All the bad guys are Knuckles. Oh, no. Um, it's just, you know, it's the way the game was meant to be played. Why are you, what? Do you want one of us to think? Why the fuck is it? It's playing itself. Oh, is that the demo loop? Oh, oh it is. Let okay, it, I'm sorry. I was let it play. Man, if the game was just play itself. <laughs> I just, well, I thought the controller was fucked up. Everything else fucked up today. Why wouldn't the controller That's just wrong. play? Why is it what's broken in the very big front right there? What do you mean? Nothing's broken. It's like that, a little piece of red. Over yeah, they, yeah. Wiped, they wiped. That's where they wiped off the Sonic. <laughs> it looks fine to me. <laughs> uh, who wants up on I'll Knuckles, play. Knuckles, and Knuckles? All right. Give it to me. Bruce like how says chuckle there, too. Yeah, you better chuckle. Because Knuckles cracks his knuckles. It's so stupid. This is not the first level, by the way. Yeah, how did you get into this level? Well, whatever, who cares? That's Knuckles for you, baby. I don't like that. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Dudes, everybody. Hey. I'm, I'm your host and, and man with a barely functioning back, Lauren Sontag. <laughs> I'm joined by three fine gentlemen. Bruce Green, happy birthday. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, Adam Kovic, how hey, are you? Hey, what's up? And uh, Sonic, number the internet's number one Sonic fan, Omar. <laughs> hey, Sonic. Uh, in case you're wondering where James and Lisa are, they're at a wedding, you think? Yeah, in, in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you tricked wedding. me again. That was the demo loop. Oh shit! Dang, you got me. I'm pressing the button. It's gonna keep wait, going. Well, wait. you have on chuckle. Go to. Oh, What's no. oh no? I don't remember. Who fucking knows? Joke of a game. All right. Oh, we'll it's do. options. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, Sonic Mania is out tomorrow. <laughs> uh, time was we would record these podcasts on Tuesday, which meant we could always play the latest and greatest in video games. And then they wanted us to be part of a podcast block, so now we're on Monday, which means Sonic Mania isn't out yet, which means. And we're not cool enough to have gotten it early. No. Did you pause it? No, I pressed. Oh, I guess you I did. pressed start. I want to skip this though. You can't. Why skip would it. you? I don't want to see Knuckles again. Wait, Knuckles. Oh, there it goes. Um, this podcast is brought to you by two very fine sponsors, Beachbody and Mac Weldon. Uh, you can get your free Beachbody trial membership uh, by texting dude d u d e to thirty thirty thirty. Um, and you can get twenty percent off your Mac Weldon order by using our promo code soup. So learn more about those sponsors soon. You can hear the rings in the background. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm really hoping it's not too loud. We got burned by that last week. I'm sorry about that, guys. But uh, now it looks like it's an appreciable volume. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Bruce. God, you're every kid I didn't want at my birthday party oh, right on, now. I'm trying to figure out a spin. What do you mean his spin? Down. down. There it is. Bruce got it. Nice, nice job. I got nice a job, I Knuckles. Chick. Good okay. job. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I forgot. The, the fifth member of this week's podcast is my main man, Knuckles. Uh, yeah, everyone loves Knuckles. Main, main, main. Wait, who's following him then? Another Knuckles. Knuckles. Another Knuckles. What's the problem? Uh, no, 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 but like in real, in reels. Tails. Huh? It was always oh, Tails. Tails. Oh, I see. And then your uh, your little brother who you didn't let play, mm-hmm. <laughs> you'd always give him the controller like, here, you play Tails, you can't die. And then he kind of flies in and he can only help you. We can lose rings though. Look at this. He's Bruce. Just, you fucked it up, man. What am I supposed to do? What do you mean? Uh, just keep going. You gotta go fast, It's Bruce. fucking Sonic. You press right. Hold on a minute. Jeez. <laughs> you guys. He's figuring it out slowly. <laughs> it's funny because Bruce was triggering some people last week with his inability to jump on bits. Hopefully, oh, the, there will be equally what? mad people in the comments. It was a it was a very uh, a very small <laughs> subset. That's, that's, that's yeah. got to be a vocal minority. It was. It was absolutely. If I've ever seen one, uh, that's all right. All I right. win. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, everybody, this is the podcast celebrating Sonic and Sonic Mania and everything else about Sonic. Uh, apparently, Sonic Mania is good. It's the Sonic you've been waiting for. We did it. 86 on Metacritic. 
Wow. Here, here are some fine quotes from you, uh, for you from uh, reputable games journalists who play Sonic games for a living. Jump, uh, jump at the fucking hole. From Games Beat. Oh. Quote, Sonic Mania isn't just a great game for old Sorry. Sonic fans, it's a great game. This inspiration oh. from the past should be Sonic's future. Uh, Dual Shockers writes, Sonic Mania oh. has helped me rediscover what I all, what it was I loved about Sonic growing up and took me back to a time oh, where I could just oh, pick up a rings. game and have fun. This is for Sonic fans everywhere and it will not disappoint. Uh, game Informer writes, quote, A return to the series' roots in every sense, Sonic Mania is a joyful reminder why the franchise became such a hit in the first place. Yeah. Though it's content with... Though it's content with relieving past glories, it does so exceptionally well. Exciting level design, a seller soundtrack, and cool expansions on the original formula work in accord to deliver the Sonic game fans have been waiting for. Nice. And guys, on top of that, it's only three hours long. Right? Yeah. That's what announced... Was it only three hours? Long? I mean, most most platforms. <laughs> How do I get on that rope? And, but they announced it a year ago. You don't go up. And, go down. Go right. I want to get on the rope. Sonic and Knuckles always go, go right. You can't yeah, go you up the rope. <laughs> you fucked it up. You never go already. left. Yeah. That's what you got to play through the game 18 times to discover the optimal path through every level. Welcome wow, to Sonic. that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, that's great. Jesus Christ, there are so many annoying sounds today. Sorry, Sorry there was a truck backing up outside. Yeah, there was like an, a, there was an alarm go- Oh, shield. There it is again. There was an alarm going off for about three hours this morning. Hit A twice. There was a cricket buzzing Not like in that. <laughs> I did what you told me. I know, I know. It's gonna be the you, worst for the audio podcast. Yeah, sorry. Nah, that's all right. We're all just <laughs> laughing at Bruce. Um, so are you guys excited for Sonic? Don't no. worry. Yeah, no, I, I got another more expansive dude soup quality thought. Okay. But I, I'm gonna call it a thoughtable. This is a Lawrence thoughtable. But we're not gonna get there yet. All right. I want to hear you guys talk about how excited you are for Sonic. Played it in the '90s, and I was tired of it then. I'm tired of it now. I want it. <laughs> Everybody says it's great, though. So, but I already <laughs> played it! Oh, uh, well, that's true. Wait, <laughs> but you can you do guys, it again! Did you guys grow up Genesis kids? No, I, mean, I was a Nintendo kid. I was yeah, a whatever I get my sad hands on. Oh, yeah. No, Nux. Kid. Nux got through Act 1. <laughs> K-N-U-X, yeah, bro. Man, Knuckles is cool. How about you, Omar? <laughs> I know, I, I never played these games when I was a kid. Yeah, neither did I. I played Super Mario. Clearly. I mean, yeah, obviously I didn't play them. You know what you can do with the bubble shield? What? <laughs> you can breathe underwater forever. That's always really stressful for you. Yes, do it. You're not underwater, though. Why do you Oh, you got it? a bonus zone? Sweet. Get those fingers. Don't fuck it up. Do not fuck it up. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? Go around the fucking circle! <laughs> get around the edges and you get all were the ones not, in the middle. Are you not God damn. To touch the thing? <laughs> I'm never, I don't know, I can't tell, it's, I, it's garbage! I hate Sonic, and I know how to do everything! <laughs> I hate Sonic. <laughs> oh, Sonic is so great! Oh, You're not Sonic. even flying his knuckles, and it's bothering me. What do you mean, flying? <laughs> oh, he can't now, he's in the bubble. Wait, no, go back underwater, he turns into Sonic. No, it's just blue. That's blue, yeah, it's blue knuckles. He's blue because he's in water. Don't blue embarrass blue yourself, Omar. <laughs> Well, you you just see blue and you automatic, automatically assume Sonic. Yeah, cool. Look, the enemy's I mean, head is got, knuckles. He's got his fucking shoes on and stuff too. Excuse me. Oh yeah, you're right. He does kind of turn. He into turns Sonic. into Sonic. How do I get up nah. there? it's just a color. It's oh. just a palette swap. It, his reggae shoes turn into blue shoes when he's underwater. See, it's just palette swap. I, I don't want you to give too much credit to the creators of Sonic and or Knuckles. This is Knuckles and Knuckles starring Knuckles. Where they went. All right, would you Sonic? What else can we do? I don't know. Make a red make, one. Yeah, make his hair longer. Make him red. Why Although I like, know it's different. He's an echidna. And like. Okay, it doesn't look anything like an echidna. God, you're so good at this. It's, how do I fly? You keep saying I can fly. Double tap. That's I. What oh. is that? I don't. I, I so, guess you're. I guess you have Sonic powers as Knuckles. Yeah, he does. Because he can somehow spin worse. He, I don't think he can climb walls either. Ow, He's not actual. I'm dead. Die. Wow. So you can't do any of the cool stuff that Knuckles can do. You, you know. You know what the Sonic and Knuckles thing was? What the big deal was? No. Uh, they were. They were mad at each other. Well, no, because you have to buy the cartridge. Yeah, it was DLC. You, it was basically deal. Yeah, exactly. It's an expansion pack, but literally an expansion pack. So you bought Sonic and Knuckles, and then you open the top, and you put your old cartridges on there, like Sonic Three, and then all of a sudden it added Knuckles as a character. Wow. That's that's kind of fucking cool. It's, back then it was pretty awesome. That would have blown my mind yeah, man. as a kid. You ever seen this was a tech advance in a lot of stupid ways. Yeah. There you, go. you fell off. <laughs> you found the rope and you fell off. I don't understand. How was I supposed to hold the button or? No, do nothing. Just jump on and do nothing. <laughs> That's what I did! It's the slowest playthrough of Sonic I've ever seen. It's not Sonic, it's Knuckles, and Knuckles starring Knuckles. Anyway. He's faster than that. Are you into this game, Lawrence? No. Are you not gonna be into Mania, then? I'll play it, but I've long thought for many mechanical reasons that Sonic is kind of a busted bad game. But that's just me, whatever, man. No one wants to hear about that. What they do want to hear about is my Lawrence brand Thoughtable. Yeah. Which is Why do you keep trying to brand these segments? Audible. I gotta sell those shirts, Bruce. Uh, <laughs> okay, sales. I got some ideas for you. <laughs> There's one thing people love. It's buying a 
shirt based on a dumbass segment from a podcast. <laughs> well, somebody How else die. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's because you suck at it. <laughs> yeah, no, that was not the problem. So buy your thoughtable oh. T-shirt today. Also, here's your thoughtable. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what particularly prompted this thought. I think I had a, you guys were quoting like League of Their Own a lot for a minute there. I was like, man, that was weird because in the 80s, that was basically the last time that anyone who was alive during the time that movie was set was alive to watch the movie. And then I was like, okay, I guess it was kind of a nostalgia trip for uh, the last hurrah of that generation that's probably well, well done and dead by now. Um, rest in peace forever. Are you talking about League of Their Own? Yeah. I think it came out in the 90s. Yeah. Okay. But it was set in the 20s. Oh, okay. So I anyone gotcha. who was... Like, it was like the last swipe you could get on anyone who was actually alive during oh, when see. the movie was set. So Careful. they could maybe get a bit of a nostalgia Careful. trip. Look how cool he is. Look at that monkey knuckles. Never mind. <laughs> um, and then it kind of... Uh, I'm describing the, the process of my thoughtable here. Um, yep, yeah, you failed. <laughs> that was weird. That yeah, was I not, know, it's that was not sucks. The, you all, yeah. Uh, so then I realized that, oh, wait a minute, in the 80s, there were a rash of 50s throwback films. Uh, Cry Baby, Grease, Dirty Dancing, Stand By Me, Back to the Future, Porky's, The Outsider's Little Shop of Horrors, A Christmas Story, the list goes on. What is your thoughtable? I'm getting there. Um, the, no, the reasoning... wasn't it? <laughs> no, 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 not yet, no, no. There's, there's a much deeper thoughtable happening soon. Um, the reasoning being that, uh, the people that grew up in the 50s, when the 80s rolled around, were old enough to make their thing. So it only made sense that they would make something that reminded them of their childhood, or uh, reflected the culture they grew up in in some way. Mm -hmm. And it's happening now. Um, things like Ready Player One, and, and uh, fucking Kung Fury, uh, Synthwave, Outrun, all that stuff. It's all very referential of an 80s aesthetic. Yes. Because people that grew up in it are now old enough to make their own thing. And the thing they end up making Do in Adam, are you playing now? No, oh. those tales. <laughs> oh, okay. Wouldn't, the, wouldn't all the 80s stuff have happened earlier? Like, aren't... Because, like, I'm technically an 80s kid, but I was too young in the 80s to really remember the 80s. Well, it's because... Well, yeah, I mean, you were, what, five or six? Like, yeah, in the I, mean, 80s? I was born in 83. But that's that's different, though, than being a kid of the 80s. Like, but well, you were a kid of the 80s, so, like, you were, like, 12. 80s nostalgia would have happened you, you, last, last decade, right? But you weren't in a position of, like, creative authority right. to make those To make things. a movie, right. You right, were right, you were right. still in your early but 20s. I'm, but I am now in, an, in a mm -hmm. position to make stuff. Wouldn't I be making 90s stuff and not 80s well, stuff? Well, that's happening, too. I think we're, we're, we're nearing the end of our... Of our 80s wraparound, and we're ending 90. We're entering 90s wraparound. Yeah. Okay. Well, because okay. we're what they call 90s kids. The, pe yeah. the people that are making the stuff that Lawrence is talking about are older than you. They're yeah, like yeah, 45, right, 50. Right. So I figured, like, they're so. you know they're past it. Yeah. Well, so. no, they're not. They're not past. They're now they're making what was for them 12, 12 years old to 16 years old in the 80s. And then when you get to 45, 50, you'll be making the 90s. Oh. See what I have saying? to be older to make. This yes. Stuff. Yes. Oh, okay. That's 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 how the generation gap works. My uh my thoughtable is, um. <laughs> I'm not gonna get too political with it. Oh boy! Oh, but geez. it does occur to me. Beca that when did this podcast become a mouthpiece for Lawrence? Well, what do you mean? It's always yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's new to you. We gotta sell those shirts, Bruce. I don't know what. <laughs> sure, has to do with anything. I um, I so this this is the this is the oh. least formed part of the thoughtable, but it, it occurs to me that there are certain people in positions of power that seem intent oh. on recreating. A world that's similar to the '80s. So now we have to worry about fucking neo Nazis again, which wasn't really a thing until the mid '80s. Or I mean, it always was theoretically, but the punk scene kind of blew up with that shit. Oh, you got to worry about nuclear war again. These are things that haven't happened. So I wonder to what degree does the need to recreate your your heyday stop? Like, do, is it just goofy movies, or do people unconsciously try and recreate those conditions? No matter what they're doing, uh, whether it's you know governing the world or making a making a movie with a giant robot, I'm sure a psychologist would say yes. Subconsciously, people want to recreate the stuff they <laughs> they they but, broke that uh, like recreating Sonic. See, wrapped it around. They want to recreate the stuff that they grew up with, well, whether or not it's good or bad. Well, the reason um, they're re-release or remaking Sonic the way it was because Sonic hasn't sold well in the last right because they've always tried to get something new, yeah. and Sonic has always kind of been bad. So, but it was, but it was the best when it first started. Well, it had it had its gimmick, right? Like its gimmick was, we're gonna go real fast. Right. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be the craziest frame rate you've ever seen. And I mean, like, and people liked it. It was yeah. a, it, it was a thing, but all, but not for very long. And then, yeah. and then Sega, you know, just murdered it oh. um, by by trying to make twenty games or whatever, thirty Sonic games or some dumb shit. Um, but it's sort of the same thing that we're talking about now, which is like people are trying to recreate. <laughs> nice job. See the people, frame rate. People are trying to recreate. What the hell? I, I don't know. It just went into slow motion. They're trying to recreate the bad and the good. Uh. So, 
Um, so well, to them, it's still the good. And, and this is something that I good, right? I talk about this a lot. Um, I don't know if I talk about it on the podcast, but I always talk about nostalgia and how it affects what you watched and how you felt when you uh, saw those things. So like, like uh, I'll stand by it to the bitter end. Will is a bad film. Willow? Um, yeah, Willow is a bad movie. And uh, like, it's just generally a bad movie. Not a, not a very good film. Just in case you guys don't know what Willow is. Um, yeah. It's like, there was, a, it was oh. part of a rash of weird, like, high fantasy movies in the 80s. It's a ripoff of Lord of the Rings because they yeah. couldn't make Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there was, like, Legend and, and Dragon Slayer and oh, a bunch Legend of... Legend was fucking awesome, though. No, eh. those are all bad. Those Come are all on. bad films. Uh, and so, like, a good example for me is Last Starfighter. I watched Last Starfighter hundreds of times when I was a kid. And Last Starfighter was, like, th this, this movie where it's, it is every kid's dream. This guy's really oh, good at yeah. a video game. He gets teleported into the video game becomes a starfighter pilot fighting aliens in an entirely different world. Oh, wait. Um, no, a, this is going to be the worst correction I've ever made, but doesn't wasn't it that the game was a scouting tool for actual aliens that came down and yes. joined our space force? It's like it's like Ender's game basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and that, yes, like the, I guess what I'm saying is you played the video game and then you got to be in the video yeah, game. Yeah, you're um, right. so regardless, it's uh it's terrible. I just watched it the other day. Boy, is it bad. <laughs> Just like Adam at this game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not doing as well. I, I, <laughs> See, wanna, not as easy as it looks. I want to blame the controller. controller and the, controller and the fact that it, I never... Controller I, I never remembered this game running like molasses. But the thing about nostalgia so is slow. that nostalgia gives you a good feeling. Because mm. when you were 12, everything was fine. So you probably, like, let's say you had a good childhood or whatever. You love, you know, you had your bet. This is when you first fell in love when you're 16 years old. And then you saw Last Starfighter 100 times. Yep. That's why you like that movie. You invited her over to play Sonic. Um, and I think she left forever. That's the that's a it's an interesting side effect of what Lawrence is talking about, which is that nostalgia affects your judgment on what you think is good or bad. It may not be good or bad. Um, it may not be objectively good or bad. Now that's hard to say because I know most things are subjective, but uh, we have a lot of measuring tools nowadays, like Rotten Tomatoes, etc., that are supposed to be as objective as you can get for movies. So, um, so, what are you supposed to do here? You'll see. Not touch things? Oh, wait. There are... <laughs> <laughs> that was fucked. <laughs> there are blue spheres that do not have stars in them. Those are the ones Those are the get. ones you're supposed to touch. Not okay, the all right. other ones. So, <laughs> wait, I only touched the blue one, though. Yeah, but it had, it had a this, star this, in it. This is in fucking troll mode. There are better, there are better they blue ones. They trolled me. There are other blue ones. You need to hit those instead. Jump into that. I, look, watch this thing not work either. So, Nostalgia and I... Uh, I, I have, you got it. I've tried to get really good at figuring out what I am nostalgic for and what is actually objectively a good movie, television show, whatever. Hmm. Uh, Lawrence, you and I were talking about that on I think on Friday. Yeah. About how, like, I'm, I'm really trying to be, uh, I, I try to stay ahead of things. I try to stay progressive when it yeah. comes to music or... To always be listening to new things and not hate them just because they're new and foreign and weird and... Because as soon as you start doing that, you lose track of the world. I think you're that old. was... You said that. That's you, exactly when you're old. You, you were, you, you basically, everybody passes you by. Mm -hmm. And that then... Oh, like yeah, yeah. 15 years ago, I stopped paying attention to new things. <laughs> right. Well, and that's bad. I mean, like, yeah. that's, that's just generally not a good practice. Um, because then I think we get into the strange world we're in now hmm. where we've got... You know, the older generation is like, I remember when things were great. Yeah. And that's because they were young and I, they, you know, like they are nostalgic for those things. Well, I, I do the eye roll thing when there's like a lot of kids are now discovering Stranger Things. Like, man, I love the 80s. Like, well, I mean, you, you think you do. Right. The 80s kind of sucked. Uh, I mean, like parts of it were cool and like we're kind of we're extrapolating the cool parts of it. Right. And then a bunch of people are like, did you know Winona Ryder was in films before Stranger Things? Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and then that, that sort of shit makes me feel old. Yeah. No, of course. Of course like, it does. And that makes sense because, again, you've got a whole new generation discovering these people and, and those things. And since we pulled the coolest parts out of it, then they see only the coolest thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, just like every other time in human history, uh, there are lots of bad things and lots of good things. So... In the 80s, we can, you know, for every one amazing band like the Pixies, there were, they were 50 that were garbage. Um, and it's I this, like garbage. And it's the same. <laughs> that was the 90s. Um, it was this, it's the same for every other generation. Uh, so we have to figure out what is objectively good. I know that's hard to say. It's very, very hard. But to how say. do you? So how do you uh, take into account that you're like you're trying to do objectively good, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's all it's all based on the time period too, like. That was good for the time. Yeah. Yeah. How do you how do you reconcile? It? Those are man. That's that's another really important thing that you bring up because um, and if I'm talking too much, let me. Oh, you did. Uh, if I'm talking too much, let me know. Um, oh, that's cool, man. The uh, 
This is a podcast. You're supposed to talk too much. Yeah. I know, but I, I, that's very, it's actually very rare that I talk on this podcast. Um, anyway, so um, <laughs> so for your question, which was how do you figure out whether or not what was it? Say it again. Like, well, okay, so you're you're trying to go back and look at look at your nostalgia, right, and, mm-hmm. and decide if it was objectively bad or good. Oh, right. But based on current your current tastes. Right. Well, or, or like current conditions. Oh, like, like, at the time, it might be it might be bad now, but at the time it was fucking awesome. Well, you can go. All right, so that's a that's a. All right, so that's another one. Like it's Willow. Willow's a, like Willow's a good example because everyone's like, oh, the special effects are so good, and yeah. they immediately look dated. But five years later, they look dated. Okay. Uh, Jurassic Park is a good a good example of a film that still looks pretty good, and the movie was made in 1993. I want to say, so uh, a lot of that ha- has to do with how the director shot everything. If they use practical effects in the right way, if they use CG in the right way. Uh, and there are films that stand the test of time. Like we yeah. all know those films, Casablanca and um, mm. you know, like Citizen Kane and those sorts of films. They're still good. I like, I saw Casablanca for the first time a couple of years ago. I was like, holy shit, this is a great movie. Yeah, same here. There, uh-huh. There's a weird reverse nostalgia that happens though with kids, I notice. Mm-hmm. So like, uh, I remember reading a thing uh, a while ago where someone saw Alien for the first time. This is like a, someone probably in their teens or 20s and they're like, like it's not alien, but man, it is cliched as fuck. Mm. You're like, yes, it invented those cliches. Right, right. And and what's so another interesting point there is that you have to be a little bit informed. So I think the older you get, the more you kind of can see patterns and realize um, what was innovative and what was cliche, what was derivative. Uh, and it helps to do a little studying before you start saying stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you're 16 years old and being like, this is so cliche. Well, yeah, the, of course, you know, like you said, it started the cliche. Um, so it requires a little bit of effort on your part. Get no history to do. So, yeah, to do some sort of uh, so you know, just educate yourself. But it's kind of tough too. So like, I grew up watching The Simpsons, and they referenced the shit out of everything. Yeah, they did. And so there's a lot of times when you get older, you go, "Oh, I had no idea that The yeah. Simpsons was doing this thing." Yeah. And it, like, and there's so many movies that I feel like I haven't seen, but I've seen. Right. That like. Uh, what, what's a good example? So, like, I've never actually seen Die Hard all the way through. Wow! But no, that's so the thing good. is though, it's been referenced so many times, and I've seen it like bits of it on TV where I'm like, I think I got the, the gist. <laughs> I think I think I know the movie at this point. But then you get that really cool experience of uh, of discovering. You get to compare and contrast your conception of something based on the references you consumed versus the actual thing. Oh yeah. Because yeah. Um, yeah, Casablanca is another movie that is or at least was referenced a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, even weirdly, like played against Sam is not in the movie. It's yeah. not a line that gets said. Yeah. But in co- in context, uh, even even Humphrey Bogart commanding his piano player to play a particular song actually has a whole lot of context and meaning in that scene. Wait, he doesn't basically... he doesn't actually say that in the movie? No, no, it's a different line. He just said he just he, he says something like play like play that song. The piano player is like, you really want that song? And he's like, yeah, play it. Something like that. I don't remember the exact line, but played against Sam is not in it. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's the weird thing, right? I mean, it's 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 always fascinating how things like that happen. Where like, like you know, you mishear a lyric or something, and that becomes yeah. What is that called? Something there's yeah. There's a word for it. We brought it up before. It's the monkey, the the Congo monkey laser pre- problem. Well, it's the Berenstein Bears thing. Oh yeah, which is like the parallel universe. What happened uh, to the sound? I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> it got oh, all man. chirpy weird. <laughs> no, Boy. So, I thought it was supposed to sound like that. Cool. It sounded Probably. It sounded like cool. I mean, to be fair, this is a modded version of the game. It's the best version of the game. <laughs> Wait, I shouldn't be drowning. I have a bubble on. You're not. Oh, Thank Tails you. is drowning. Partners. No, <laughs> Knuckles. They're all Knuckles. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, that's just uh, something something to... Not necessarily that we have like a... Or that I have necessarily a conclusion. But I think as, as one like grows older... That's also what I call... I like to call the anime principle, like all things uh, relates to anime. And the way that, like you guys said, the best things sort of make it out of the respective decades, the, the, or the yeah. bad shit gets forgotten. Yep. That was what I think led a lot of people to be anime fans, is that in the in the 90s and 2000s, only the good shows got translated. So it kind of gives you this warped idea that anime is good. Only and the it's, good shows. Well, good. Like, things, things that seemed monetarily viable enough to translate. Because there was so much garbage that did not get translated. And now that now that all the tools are there, you get it. I feel like you can get a much better view of the landscape than you used to. Not that it's land you want to go to. Yeah. To me, the classic example of this whole like paradox is Event Horizon. Huh? Because Event yourself. Horizon, Event Horizon, when I saw it when it came out, was the most terrifying thing I had ever seen in my entire life. Okay. Okay. And at that time, it was like 
it was insanely gory and like all this like crazy suspenseful all that stuff. Oh, yeah. But you watch it now and it's it's fucking terrible. Really? Oh, yeah, it has an age well? It, no, it is the worst. Oh, I wouldn't say oh. it's bad. I watched it. I watched it for the first time, the absolute first time, maybe a year ago. Oh, okay. And I was like, mm, this is okay. I get, I get why it was a big deal at the time. Yeah. But I don't. Like, I wouldn't say it's awful now. It's I like would Hellraiser. never. But I would never call that movie awful in for real. Like to me, watching it that time when I was younger <laughs> is ball. is an amazing experience well, that no smart. one will ever have again. You know. Um. Yeah. I mean, and that's like the. Like I said, it, do, it hasn't aged well, and that's a really good phrase because mm. yeah. the more that you watch a movie, the better it should get. Mm. Um, hmm. Ideally, that's the way it should. Like there are very few movies that are that are only made for one viewing. They're like, but I mean, that's like most of the way the movies are designed to be made and marketed. Right that's now. how you know they're bad. Though. But that's like so, all of that's all of movie dumb right now. Like the summer blockbuster. It's not all of them. Have you seen Dunkirk? Yeah, Dunkirk. Uh, well, I know. I know it. Omar saying no, like Transformers. No, well, I know. I, mean, I know exactly what Omar's saying, but that, that's what I'm trying to say is that that's why they're bad. Is that somebody basically was like, "It's good enough," yeah. and they moved on. Um, and that's 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 somebody that doesn't care about their craft. Is is usually like the devil's in the details for that kind of stuff. And uh, if at this point a movie is only made for you to watch once, then there that's a that's a cash grab. Um, yeah. And uh, people are allowed to do that. Obviously, it's a capitalist society. We can do whatever we want. So. Sort of, sort of my issue with horror films right now. Mm. There's not a lot of good horror films. It, it's all just the easy jump scares. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because they're they're trying to market it to an, uh, the widest audience possible. Where a good horror movie can't be rated R anymore because no one will see it. Oh right, yeah, yeah. But a good horror movie doesn't have to be rated R. I know, but like, doesn't have to be gory. I always think that one of the scariest movies was the American remake of The Ring. That's PG-13. Is it really? Yeah, there's wow. like, well because there's I nothing really in it. Like a horse jumps off a fucking boat. Who's no, that blue guy? You're right. It is. It is really scary. It is really really scary. No, it's, it's genuinely frightening. Yeah. And like, I don't know. It, huh. And so uh, and just I feel like every Blumhouse like horror film is just sort of the same these days. Like it's just the hmm. the Annabelles and the it's it's safe. It's safe horror. It doesn't get out. Is good. Doesn't psychologically get freak out. you out. Yeah, get get out. out. It follows. The no, no, that's I really like it. Follows. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think a lot of uh, I guess. Yeah, People liked it, they seem, but I think they'd rather go see the, the Sinisters and the the Annabelles and the Conjurings and the Paranormal Activators. Conjuring is well, it's, it's interesting because I think the I, I feel like, and, and I've said this before, and, and I know jack shit about movies, so this is me mostly speaking without any base of, of intelligence or analysis. But I feel like horror movies are how you prove to a studio that you can make a cohesive a cohesive movie on a budget, mm. and if if you can make a decent, at least watchable horror movie. On, on not much budget, but you deliver it on time and it proves that you know composition, you know how to incorporate special effects, you know pacing, you know... Yeah. Like, you can make a solid movie. Oh, yeah, that's been, a, you, that's been a template for decades. It's a, right. Yeah, it's a proving ground for filmmakers. Yeah, but yeah. If, if you Sam make Raimi, a conjuring, if you make a conjuring, I feel like you're sending the signal that, well, I want to make, not necessarily blockbusters, but I'm cool being in the churn. Like, I want to I wanna make Star Trek, which is literally what happened. Um, at least I think it was. What? Anyway, Justin Lin, he he did. Uh, oh, oh, I see. Wasn't it James no, he was Wong? the other one. He did Fast and Furious. You're thinking Fast and Furious. Furious. Furious but. Yeah. The guy who did Beyond did yeah. Fast and Furious. Yeah, Fast and Furious. You're Something proving yourself that, to be though. a racist right Sorry, now. Sorry, no, 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 no. He did a horror movie. You're getting Justin Wan and Justin Lin Insidious, mixed up. Insidious, maybe. Ah, whatever. I'll look it up. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> um, the guy you're talking about, the guy who started Saw. No, that's somebody else. Justin Wong. Yes, I'm not thinking. Or, I'm not thinking about him. Maybe. I'm getting the names wrong. Anyway. I'm proving myself to be a racist. Um, I, I feel like if... <laughs> I'm surprised you know that many directors' names off the top of your head like that. Well, I mean, Adam watches a lot of movies. I, I don't. Um, but I feel like if... I, I feel like the, the rationale still stands. If, if you're making a Conjuring or you're making a, a Lights Out or whatever. I mean, you're just saying, I can make a solid movie that will earn its money back. Mm -hmm. But if you make Get Out or It Follows or something, you're saying, I, I'm investing a little more into the aesthetic and the... The design of the film that I want to present to well, the world. Did you see the news about Get Out today? No, the sequel's not. Doesn't have. Uh, They're what? doing a sequel. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, not about the sequel, but the actual film Get Out. They said it was the most profitable film oh. of 2017. That, that doesn't surprise right. me. Yeah. Because it was so well made. So he was uh, Justin Lin. Yeah. Uh, was the Fast and Furious mm -hmm. producer, for Fast Five and Fast Furious Six. Who's the Saw guy? Uh, but he did horror before that, right? I'm gonna look right now. Uh, hold on. He did SWAT. Oh, that was a the television series. Oh, fuck. Oh, that's I, on the way. That's on the I way. I am mistaken. Adam, maybe. You oh, he did. Or... He did direct a True Detective. Um, let's mm -hmm. see here. I remember that. Uh, Annapolis. 
I don't see any horror. Never mind. No, as a director, look, but look he up, may be a producer. Look at the guy who did Saw. I will. Yeah. That that's who you're gonna get mixed up with. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. So we're getting off topic here. Yeah, you're absolutely I think you're right. Saw is a good film franchise. Is it? No. <laughs> Saw, Saw one I thought was great. So those, yeah, it's you want the, these blues. Yeah, yes. there's that's what you want. Booyah! Oh, oh wait. you want to turn them stars. What? There we go. Oh, oh. So you do this Bruce Lutch. Watch. Watching. Oh this. no! James Wan. Oh, rings. James Wan is who I was thinking of. J is James Wan uh, Saw? No, he's uh, he's Insidious and Conjuring. Got it. Justin Lin is Star Trek. Writer on Saw. Maybe he was director on Saw. Okay. My bad. We figured it out. And then, Justin yeah, Lin he, and James Wan. He did Furious Seven, and now he's doing Aquaman. So I think. Fuck man, I, I'm sorry. That was a huge digression, but I, I still think that. Uh, <laughs> so there, viewer. Yeah, I still think that you can. Uh, you can you can still send a message with that, even if your message is. I know I know how to put a film together, and at the end of the day, I'm not going to waste your money, and you'll you'll get a product that we can make some money on. But some of those directors um, have have proven themselves, and I think then from there, like basically the movie that they made, like Get Out, is a good example of a, of a film that's very very tight, and they cared about the details. Mm. Uh, it's a uh, peel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he obviously gave a shit, right? He gave a shit about that movie. He gave a shit about. How it was written and directed and shot and a lot of other stuff. It had something to say, and, and it had something to say, and uh, and that's the kind of filmmaker. Oh, that's the kind of it filmmaker happens. that you want. Um, and, and I feel like maybe like Michael Bay, while an amazing filmmaker, uh, m maybe just the Transformers are just cash grabs. Um, oh, that yeah. Th they're crazy, crazy films, and they take you know a lot of production, a lot of work. That's every film. But uh, oh, the sound is all fucked up. But <laughs> I don't know what happened to Sonic. It sounds kind of awesome though. Yeah, I guess sure. I, I'll I'll take the Christopher Nolans any day over the over the Michael Bay's somebody who who is making original productions and also cares about what they're doing. Um, I, I, great tweet there. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That, that's tough to say just because I feel like Michael Bay probably does care. Oh, I'm sure he, cares. he just cares differently than you. You mean for money? Uh, well, it's like James Cameron, right? He like cares about the it. tech more than the. Uh, I don't know. He cares about oh, some. I, he I think he cared about Thirteen Hours. You know? Yeah, yes. Um, but well, so that's the difference, though, right? Pain and he, he gets to pick which projects he cares about, and I don't. <laughs> I, I, that's not. I'm not crazy about that. Hmm. I, I would rather somebody care about everything they do <laughs> than just a few of the things. Well, um, some people don't have that liberty. Um, Michael Bay does. Michael Bay absolutely could yeah. if he chose to. One hundred percent. May. Yeah. Yes, he does. It's, He's it's a millionaire. Yeah, yeah, you're he right. He can do whatever yeah, he wanted. Right. <laughs> uh, so that's what I'm saying. Maybe Transformers to him is art. Who am I to say? <laughs> I've never made a Transmorpher. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're, we're talking about how, how movies and can influence your life, but we have a movie that can influence your life in a different way, and that is a video from Beachbody On Demand. Um, <laughs> Beachbody is sponsoring this podcast, and Beachbody On Demand is their new service, wherein it's, it's basically a subscription service, but um, you basically have access to their entire workout catalog on the internet whenever you like. On your phone, on your computer at home, uh, what have you. And the thing that I always use it for, and the thing that I think maybe most of our audience could probably benefit from is if, if you're starting out on your fitness experience, the thing to consider is that Beachbody On Demand is cheaper than a gym and you can do it at home. So um, I can understand gyms can be kind of intimidating, especially if you maybe don't think you look as great. And while people there typically don't care, there is that thought of like, well, I don't belong here until I'm already hot, which is a little weird, but um, I certainly feel judged in the gym sometimes. And there's a lot of equipment. Maybe you don't think you can use it right. The good news about most Beachbody Workouts is that typically a lot of them use your body weight, and if not that, maybe some resistance bands or anything. But certainly you can get started with nothing other than your phone and uh, some space to jump around in. So if you've been waiting for something a little more approachable, maybe a little less socially, a little less social overhead, this is a great place to start, I think. Uh, so yeah, and you can get your nutrition in line too. Beachbody On Demand also has uh, like cooking shows. Uh, they even have. Uh, a show called Fixate, which teaches teaches you healthy portion sizes, and, and this is the important thing, it even gives you like healthy cocktail recipes. So if you don't want to miss your drink really? at night, you can do it. Uh, oh. Yeah, be calorie conscious and make some delicious drinks that aren't so sugary or, or calorie laden. Uh, they have over 100 recipe videos. We can learn how to prep your meals, uh, cook kid or vegan friendly uh, meals if that's your that's your get down. And uh, does yeah, vegan friendly have to be kid friendly. Uh, they're, they're is separate. No, it's a comma. Or, kid or vegan. My apologies. <laughs> Omar is borderline offended. <laughs> no, Who said all kids are vegans? Not a not a <laughs> not a bad question. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, but yeah, if you want to get started, we're offering a, a free trial. All you have to do is text dude d u d e to thirty thirty thirty, and instructions will shortly follow. But yeah, as uh, as someone who I prefer to suffer alone, 
So if I'm working out, it's typically a very solitary experience. So I, I vibe on the ability to just sort of whenever I want in the privacy of my own room or apartment, pull up a pull up a video and work my ass off. And they got some hard stuff, man. Um, Matt and I used to used to dabble in insanity. I never did the actual routine. We just do workouts here and there. But I did twice. Yeah, Bruce got shredded. It was awesome. I lost like 25 pounds. That's yeah, the, man. It is uh, far and away the uh, the the best workout I can recommend. There you go. Absolutely, 100. Uh, so once more, that's dude D U D E to 303030 to get full access to Beachbody on demand for free for a limited time. So thank you, Beachbody, for the sponsorship, and uh, yeah, I implore you guys to check it out if you're looking to turn your life around. Learn something new about yourself. Jesus Christ, this sound is going so Why, fucking uh, weird. Why does this take so long? Uh, also, is Adam's good at getting it? into like bonus stages every two seconds? Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like that's Welcome the... to Sonic 3, motherfucker. <laughs> no, I thought, you, I thought you had to have over a certain amount of rings when you hit a checkpoint. Me too, but it's modded as yeah. hell. I think it, you have to have at least 50 rings, but it's been quite generous. Welcome to Knuckles Land. Can you get out of this, please? It's driving me crazy. <laughs> I hate it. Look at the background. Focus on it. Oh, I no. hate it. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> it's like, eyeballs, oh, I, it hurts my eye. It looks like just... little viruses, you know, like what a virus looks Thank like. Thank you. Jeez, <laughs> get me out of here. Oh. That was Son great. Sonic's there was, pretty much a virus. There was a hot window in games when it was like the Donkey Kong Country thing. They, thing. they mm -hmm. would pre-render a CG model and then just squish it into a sprite to like mimic the look of 3D. Oh, bullshit. Even though it wasn't actually 3D. Man. Watch out, you're gonna, oh, come on. I can't tell which one I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which one are you? are you? The one on the spaceship, the one jumping, or the other one jumping? Look at him, he's having a good time up there, though. There we go. Laughing his ass off. Let's ride it. Damn you, Knuckles. <laughs> uh, apart from that, uh, we had a pretty stellar weekend. Bruce, Bruce, uh, Bruce's birthday bash was at the most surreal place I think I've ever been on this planet so far. I heard two or three separate people over the last few weeks mention this place, and so then when Brett. And by the way, this is a totally impromptu thing. It wasn't like I had a party. It was just sort of like, let's go to a bar. Yeah, I'm bummed that I missed out. It really honestly wasn't a thing that yeah, like, yeah. Uh, Brett was just like, we need to go to this place called The Bungalow. And you, you guys have never been there before? I mean, even have you I, been? I have been there. Oh, wow. Like, I don't do shit. Um, <laughs> no, no, we hadn't, we hadn't been. And I think it's reaching like a fever pitch of popularity. Yeah. Because when we showed up, there were hundreds of people um, all crammed into this like, it's a huge area too. But it felt like I was at a music festival or yeah, something. Yeah. What time of day did you start there? Three. Yeah, because it's always crowded there. That's so <laughs> stupid. Yeah, There's like seven different bars inside there. Right? I had to wait in line Maybe to get in, knuckles. which is pretty cool. And uh, there were like... All right, what, uh, press A. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the, even even standing in line was surreal because it was, it was obvious that everyone there thought they were too good to stand in line. But none of them were good enough to actually bypass the line. Mm -hmm. So it was everybody sort of affecting the... Well, this is embarrassing. I mean, clearly, clearly this is everyone else, but it's not me, even though they were just standing there. Like, there were people, like, trying to, like, smooth talk the, the bouncers who were having none of it. It was pretty great. It was a good way to pass the time, watching people try and work the angles to get inside a dumb bar. How'd you guys get in? I waited like a normal human. Oh, okay. Waited, yeah. And eventually, I mean, like, they'll let you in. It's yeah, just I was gonna say, didn't you, weren't you guys, like, outclassed like, in every in way? I yes. Mean, so here's the thing. We weren't outclassed in the sense that I, we might have had more class than people there, but... Uh, they were all like really young and beautiful, and we are not. <laughs> no. So, like, we all look kind of old and mm. dirty. And then when we arrived, it was just a bunch of 22 year old, I mean, I, the uh, whitest guys and girls I've ever seen. Swinging for the fences, too. They were on a mission to get fucked up. Every last and, one and of yeah, them. and also, yes, exactly. And people were just there just to get trashed. Totally gone. Dollars, dude. Yeah. I um, think it was like, it was like 4 30, and there were already girls who were out on their feet. Like, barely able to stand. 4.30 p.m.? Yeah. Yes, sorry. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, it was weird, man. Like, the sun the sun was full up. It was a bright, sunny day. I was, like, chipper and ready to go. And there were there were just, like, girls in heels who were who were teetering. Well, like, so, <laughs> two weeks ago, um, Jess and I did our anniversary in Palm Springs. Yeah. And there was some... So, I'd never been to Palm Springs before. And uh, if you've never been or know what it is, it's similar to Vegas. Yeah. Or, but it's like it's much, much, much smaller, much smaller. Yeah. and it, it, it's similar in the way that it's like people kind of go to resorts and it's hot and they just drink. Mm -hmm. And there was a girl around six thirty who was like with her boyfriend. And she's like, "How's it going?" She's like, <laughs> she was, she was done, and she looked like she was from a foreign country. And this was like the first time she was able to drink this much. How old was she? I didn't ask. Well, what did she look? Twenty six. Okay, so picture <laughs> they're all twenty one years old. Wearing less clothes oh, yeah. and, and spin dash on it, more wasted than that girl earlier. Yeah. 
Oh, there it was. Oh, my fucking. Omar, it, you fucking embarrassed me. It was, <laughs> it was. It was crazy. It was wild. I just started all the way over. Um, and Lawrence, I think you said it was like, what people imagine a movie about Los Angeles to look like. Yeah. So it it was for me. No, it was just a walk on it. You just walk on I'm it. I'm pretty sure you. You don't gotta spin on everything. I think you spin it anyway. Um, for me, <laughs> images like that, to me, were cartoons because growing up in a small Texas town, like. The vision that I had of LA was like, uh, I think you spin dash, dude. Nope, nope. You just go kind of fast. You're well, not, you're not going fast enough. Okay, okay, okay. there it goes. Never mind. I didn't want to walk off the edge of it. Anyway, yeah, I forget that Adam is Adam's a pro at this I game. Like the shit out of this. Uh, so for me, the, my only exposure. Oh to, shit! I'm so embarrassed. I don't want to know you. <laughs> my only exposure you're fine. to you, LA you, was just kidding. Was like scenes from television, like fucking Beverly Hills 90210, and that sort of oh, like fuck you. the spelling uh, empire of, of TV dramas. Mm. And yeah. to a point, they all had like some depiction of an LA party. Which was people wearing not much clothes sitting around in this like bizarre bar just getting shit faced and whooping about life. See, that that's always weird to me that people ever say that, that they have like a predetermined idea of what LA is like. Yeah. And I imagine that's like a lot of our audience listening, like oh, you absolutely. Get, well you get the idea of America's like everyone's big and fat and everyone uh, has a gun and uh it's like everyone's a movie star in Hollywood and there's like gangbangers everywhere when it's like in reality, it's like every other city in the world. Yeah. It's got probably a different vibe, maybe, and m more likely than not, your waiter is also uh, going to go read sides later that day to yeah. go try to get a role because he has an audition. But that's really the only difference. Like I'm from LA, and I didn't, I haven't experienced like the Hollywood LA life, but for like the longest time. But um, I feel like a lot of that was people trying to emulate what they thought LA was. Yeah. Uh, yes. That's well, exactly what the bungalow uh, was. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's it, a bunch of people that were not from LA. It's like they're cosplaying as right. LA people. They, they weren't. They weren't from Los Angeles, and they went to be like, okay, now I am finally Los yeah, Angeles. Let's be sexy mm. actor types who just, but like, look, stand around and look like we don't care about anything, and just get outrageously fucked up on way overpriced drinks. Yeah, it but was more. A bunch of people are coming to LA to do that. Isn't that actually what LA is? Yeah, <laughs> doesn't that then become that, LA? It, no. It, <laughs> kind of, well, so it's sort of the weird thing. A lot of people. I always tell people this, don't come to LA, because they're always like, LA seems like it sucks. I'm like, yes, it does. Don't come here. <laughs> Stay far away. Because I, I really love living here yeah, and too. I think it's a it's a great place and it doesn't really need people coming here trying to just kind of, you know, taste make and see if this is this is where they're gonna make it. Mm -hmm. It's like go if you're gonna make it, go make it somewhere, but don't come here and be like thing, the opportunities will come to you. That's knuckles. Like the opportunities will come to me <laughs> by me dash. by virtue of me just standing here. This this, right. this definitely is a spin dash. How do you, I spin dash? You, there, like that. I like how the, you the, hold down and then press A. The stupid That's AI had to good. show you how to do it because the AI thought you were dumb. But I, I made a point, shit. Lawrence. Of I, well, you're running into everything. I made a point of uh, asking people the ooh arrow uh, <laughs> 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 of talking to like whoever I was talking to at the thing to ask where they were from. Oh, okay, good. Um, because I was always like, hey, where are you from? And oh, they'd be like, oh, I'm from Ohio. Yep. Or, oh, I'm from New York. Or oh, I'm from blah blah. blah. And, I, and I was always like, oh, cool. Like, how long you been out here? Uh, about a year. And I was always like, oh. interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna run out of money sooner or later. Um, and it was it, it was just it was weird. It was I I don't think I've ever seen a place like that here in Los Angeles. And uh, apparently spin they dash. just what are you doing? Spin, spin dash, 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 dash to the power. Um, <laughs> there we go. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> and uh, that was another weird thing is that a couple people came up to us and were like. Yo, fun house! And really? It would, it would be like, yeah, like some really preppy dude with like a backwards pink hat and a sweater tied over his shoulder. And that was even weirder. Cause then I was like, oh, this guy's a nerd. Like you need the top. he's a nerd, but he's pretending to be I need this, the top? Uh, like a rich preppy so, dude. Um, go down and get the top. The top can go through the thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this, is, this is like where, triggering Adam in a weird way. Where is it? Does, uh, doesn't it come uh, back? Oh! You nice. ran right into it. Uh, there it is. All right, sorry. Oh, get the top. Okay. Yeah, you guys, you guys really hit the nail on the head. I... <laughs> okay, slow down. Slow down. Oh, God, slow down. Oh. <laughs> oh no, that's a, that stuff oh, is fascinating okay. because, uh, all right. for me, we got this. My my favorite my favorite activity of all time. Well, okay, maybe watching Batman Forever, but a close second is people watching while drunk, because Ooh. you know it's uh, clearly people act uninhibited, but. When people are already coming into a situation with a firm grasp on the sort of persona they're trying to project, yep. it's fun to see what that becomes when they become drunk and they like can't monitor themselves so well. And it's like this weird hybrid of who they really are combined with who they're trying to be for that night or that day or whatever. 
I think you still need the top, man. Fucking, how do I get it back now? We gotta be good. There'll be another one. <laughs> I get good. <laughs> well, maybe not. Right this those. game, this was game tested to perfection for people <laughs> like you. Oh, there you go, you got it. There's that arrow and everything. So yeah, that was that was strange. I didn't really talk to anybody. I Bones and I both basically, basically posted up and we're old together. I watched you guys. I uh, he, griping in the corner. Well, and you weren't griping. I was just more of like a. I could tell you're like we're old. Well, uh, Bones I, loves that line. I'm okay yeah. with like. I can mix it up with people. I can. Shit. But uh, he seemed a little out of sorts. So basically, he, Bones, if you're listening, you were my charity case. That <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> no, no, no. String sure. with Bones is is a delight, and I I, uh, I treasure any moment I get to do it. You gotta get blackout drunk with him. Oh, that'd be great. Um, because he gets blackout drunk really easily. Aw. And then I don't. So. It's, so yeah, you're conscious for the whole thing. So I get to watch. Yeah, I get to watch him. It's it's really funny. Hmm. Um, but anyways, yeah, Adam and Omar, we missed you. We would. Uh, I oh, yeah. love to have you. I I ended up going to Jess's grandmother's 80th birthday party, and this had been planned for like weeks, mm -hmm. uh, and they had mariachis come out. Uh, like her whole family's Mexican, so like. They do all like the very Mexican things, which I, I if you've never had the uh, an opportunity to hang out with like a Mexican family on the weekend, do okay, yourself a favor. A tamale party? Oh, yeah, oh, man. Yeah, tamale party. Man, oh, just like geez. if you love like good Mexican food, like it's always just the most happy-go-lucky people. Everyone's great. Then yeah, it's even better than like right. the mariachis come out. All the old women get wet. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> old Mexican women fucking oh, love mariachis. It's Fantastic! It's a, it's a great sight to see. Not just Mexican women, everybody. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah, you're right. Like, Je I forget what oh, Jess's shit. grandmother is. I think she's like half Spanish, half Mexican, or something like that. But she's like, like you see it come out of her when like the mariachi is like, oh, like, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> but then she also um, loves Elvis, so they had an Elvis impersonator come. Oh wow! But he was getting a little like, he, uh oh, he's getting a little handsy. He's Christian. getting a little like. He knows it, what the ladies like. Yeah, he. I think he had. I mean, I think he was. I'll say it this way: he was. Playing the part a little too well. <laughs> was he like an old man or was no? He... he was a young man, and it was just really weird. I was sitting in the backyard and I was just like, I was petting one of the dogs. Um, they have a they have a bunch of chihuahuas. It's like super no, Mexican. Mexican yeah. as Mexican can be. I know he's great. And it's this little <laughs> little dog named Sparky. I love him. He's he's like nine now, but I'm petting him, and I just see this woman in all black and black hair like walk up, and she's just kind of like stumbling. I'm like, the fuck is that? And then Jess is like, oh, I think that's Priscilla. Who's That's Priscilla? Elvis's wife, oh, Priscilla Presley. Oh, got it. And I'm like, I'm like, why? And she's wearing like the, what, like, what are the jacket with the weird uh, eagle fucking like bird feathers on the side? Oh, what do you like, call that? Like an, yeah, like a straight up 80s. Yeah, feathered, like, it was just really weird. And then Indian thing. I'm I'm losing what it's actually called. But anyway, so Elvis performs and. It's just a lot of gyration and like it's just him in like a, a small PA. Was he touching people? He was good and a little kissy and a little touchy and Ew. a little, a little, a little crotch, kissy, a little crotchy. Shit. Gross. Uh, yeah, that's what they wanted. Uh, oh. I think some of the people wanted it. Those meals, um, meals have their good time. One of our friends was taking video of me because I was sitting next to Jess's grandma. I'm like <laughs> this, and Elvis is coming up, and I'm just kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my, wow. So yeah, that got kind of wild. Oh, off. Um, Why it, would they? Sorry, why would they ever put a fucking spring that leads you right into spikes? Well, to fuck you up. These yeah, games suck, man. <laughs> These games suck. You think, you think like Sonic. Dr. Anyway, Dr. Eggman wants to make it easy for you, or is it Robotnik? He's trying to beat you. Robotnik. Yeah, and then Knuckles is trying to stop you every step of the way. It's uh, fucking which, game. Which Knuckles? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Who is, um, who's who here? And then, I don't, I don't know, think we can talk about it much, but earlier that morning, Lawrence and I shot something for a... Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, for yeah. a video that's coming out, I think in like December. Uh, mm. that, that, was, that was fun though. That was very fun. I'm I'm looking forward to that coming out. God, that was a surreal day all got, around. Wore some tight outfits and uh Yeah, I got to do that thing, then I got to go to the bungalow. Man, that was a good day. The irony is I I I, I can't remember who said it, but there somebody's like looking around at me like, don't we have more Twitter followers and like everybody here? Shouldn't we be the popular ones? I was like, no, I don't you don't want It doesn't work that way, man. Yeah, I don't, you don't want that no, though. It doesn't work that way. We're not hot enough. I did. I like did. Twitter followers <laughs> fucking mean anything. I did try and try and guess which, because I there, there was a lot of like meat on display. Um, where where on, at the bungalow? Yeah. So I was like, how many of these girls are trying to get noticed? Like. This uh, is, this oh, is I see. So you should have said you were a producer. I told yeah. Bones to tell people he was a producer. Bones he is didn't married. Do it. He, Bones is a pregnant wife. It doesn't mean he has to bang anyone. It's a sociological <laughs> have we, have experiment. We that Your Honor. Oh, I, I, I don't know. Oops, sorry. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> anyway. Bones could have made some girl very happy. What are you talking? He's no, he's married. married. <laughs> I'm Bones not saying sleep married. with her. I'm saying lie to her and then leave. 
Every time nice. the Bones gets even slightly drunk, he starts going on and yeah. on about how much he loves his wife. Yeah. How much he misses her. He, <laughs> he did that. I think one time he was like, too. I don't deserve her. She's better than Mike. You should tell her that next time. <laughs> yeah, no, he wouldn't love that. He did that. He, yeah, he was going on about how much he loves Allie. Aww. That's so sweet. It's because he does. Nice Fucking jump. Hell. Nice jump. I keep bonking my head on that stupid. Yeah, you, you <laughs> go to the very edge, man. Oh, yeah, it's that easy. There we go. There. Okay. Oh, Tails just biffed it. Good. <laughs> knuckles. Knuckles, too. <laughs> Baby Knuckles. Oh man. Oh, Ooh, I had to put spikes, spikes there. there! Jesus. What? Oh, those are invisible spikes. <laughs> Sonic's never been good. Hit his eye. Nice dodge. Oh. It's weird to me how people are only now figuring this out, and they think it's like some kind of relevatory opinion. Sonic is bad. Sonic's always been bad. It's not, yep. it, I, I will say it hasn't <gasps> aged great. Uh, especially this one. I'm kind of like, shouldn't they have updated it to be like a, just a little faster? I'm just, I'm used to. Games being a little, a little quicker. I guess he is quick when he's moving, but yeah, when he's moving. the minute you gotta like ramp back up, look at that. Yeah, like, dur, 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 dur. Well, I knew that one went to the uh, left, so I held left, and then that slowed him down. Never yeah. mind, that's stupid. That's all right. I, I don't know. Do you, Lawrence, you want to do an outrage? Yeah, somebody we'll got, somebody got to take this. Take he's this. looking at you. Uh, I saw him. Take he's this like, weight off my shoulders. <laughs> Douche. Oh, that, idle, yeah. Idle animation. That's the other thing. <laughs> all right, baby. So I had my. I, there we go. <laughs> I had my surreal day with Bruce. Got got pretty messed up. Went home, sang along to a Dire Straits album, and fell asleep. But I think I did it the wrong way because my back felt a little weird yesterday. And today, I can barely move my neck. So yeah, I drank so hard I threw my back out. Something. I don't know what happened. I, Usually when that happens, I did something real stupid. Like uh, I went to a, like a punk show and got too drunk and went in the mosh and fucked myself up. But I was just sitting most of the night, so I don't understand what happened. Get him tails. You're just getting old, man. Yeah, I guess that's it. But you know what's not old? Uh, the comfortable and fresh selections from Mac Weldon. Yeah. The uh, the clothier that is sponsoring this podcast. They uh, they make a fine line of socks, underwear, Spend. shirts. He's getting there. Uh, they claim that Mac Weldon will be the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants you'll ever wear. Uh, in my years on this planet, uh, I can wear my. My socks now. Yeah. Oh, nice. You got socks on. I got my I got my Mackies on too. Yeah. Hold on, honey. Yeah. They are comfy. Just, just. <laughs> you shouldn't be yeah, moving. What are you doing? Your back hurts. Don't do that. That's okay. I got you stretching it out. Man. Yeah. No, no, you're not supposed to do that when you're hurt. <sighs> you're I'm really wearing my Max too. Uh, their underwear is fantastic. I got some uh, striped boxer briefs. Not only do I look great, but they feel good too. Mm -hmm. They've worked their way to the top of my underwear drawer, and that's a Lawrence Sontag promise. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they also have a great return policy. Um, they say if, uh, if you don't like your first pair of whatever you get, uh, they'll refund you and you can keep it. That's confidence, my friends. Uh, confidence you can believe in. Uh, so yeah, you should check them out. Uh, especially if you're... There's this weird thing, and I was musing on this the other day, um, how sometimes you just sort of... There are things in your life that you don't like or could be better, but you just don't think about it. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's like I had this garbage shower head for the longest time. Like the water sprayed everywhere was awful. And it never occurred to me that I could just go on Amazon and buy a shower head. I was just like, well, that's just how it is. My mm -hmm. shower head sucks. And then one day I got snapped out of it. I was like, wait a minute, I can afford a shower head. Why don't I buy a nice shower head? And my life's been great ever since. So <laughs> I've been great ever since. I, I implore you uh, to consider the state of your underwear, your shirts, your socks. And if you find them lacking, or if you can even imagine them being better, you should check out Mac Weldon. Mm -hmm. Because they have a house-free return policy, you really have nothing to lose. And you can get 20% off by going to MacWeldon.com and using our promo code SOUP. It's S-O-U-P at... I know, I know that. I know, I know, I know. MacWeldon.com. So thanks, Mac Weldon, for not only for your clothes, but for your sponsorship and your promo code. And yeah, guys, I, I encourage you to check them out, because I've, I've enjoyed every second. My, uh, my genitals have been cradled by Mac himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We, we should meet someday, Mac. I got yeah. some stories for you. Oh boy. Still the best. Still the best that I still have. Do you think that if you make underwear, that late at night you can go into the underwear factory and just like oh, hold fuck. your hand out over all the underwears and imagine where, where they'll go and what they'll do? It's like yes. if you have a child, you imagine their life <laughs> laid out in front of you. They're probably going to other crotches that they want to be near. Yeah, that's that could be, be like the next emoji movie. It's just paid for by underwear. <laughs> Spin dash next that. to the fucking. There do you, you know? Go. Do you know how many times I've done that? I've tried. I know what to do. It just won't <laughs> let me do it. Watch out for Robotnik. Come I on. know. Aware of knuckles. knuckles. Oh, that's chuckles. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I anyway, hate this game. I, I watched a lot of. Here, you play. I don't Again? want this. Fuck. I hate it. 
<laughs> I watched a lot of bad movies over the weekend. This is a movie podcast, sorry, but whatever. It's oh. not going to come up on that, so I'll bring Why it up Why did here. I die? Oh, that's... I ran into those spikes. Those are right? fake spikes. What? You play. I'll I do it. I game over. <sighs> Show you kids how it's done. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not... Hey, those were blue Sonic. Yeah, those weren't Sonic blue or Knuckles. Knuckles. None of this matters. Uh, huh. Um, I, I just, I, again, I'm discovering that Amazon Prime Video is a, just a treasure trove of awful things. I saw a black exploitation movie called Black Shampoo, which is about a dude who owns a salon, the, the funkiest salon, uh, west of the Mississippi or whatever. <laughs> um, anyway. Can, can you, before you go to, can you explain what black exploitation is, is meant to mean to me? Sure. Exploitation of black people. But like, sort it's, it's like made by black people. Yeah, it, it yeah. became oddly empowering. The, the term came to describe a, a series of movies that were like morally devoid. Essentially, it was like, um, it was just like sex and violence and, and almost no plot. Basically pornography without the porn. Um, but typically it was like a, a black male lead, um, black actors. Uh, typically it was about like a sure. dude who's being held down by the man in some way. And he goes on like a... Uh, a fucking rampage to to prove that that black people are fierce and independent. Um, so yeah. Did you ever see Black Dynamite? Yes. I'm oh, sorry. I, I wasn't saying I was, yes uh, to answer the question, but that's an excellent reference point. But have you seen that, Omar? The the recent movie. Yeah. 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 yeah so that that is like a did. celebration of all. That is like the yeah, ultimate yeah, just, black exploitation movie. I always just got confused by the exploitation part because it seemed like they were getting the better part. of it. I think I, I like it because it's like they took the power away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think originally it was. I, I like, could oh, be totally wrong by here. White people exploiting. Yeah, they're like, they're black like, culture. like, yeah, we can, we can totally exploit black culture, and then uh, they basically black people said, well, no, this is ours, yeah. and they took it back. Took the, yeah, took it back, and they but took we, the we power. Don't know if that's the, I don't know if that's the history. Of black I'm not sure, but I, I know a yeah, lot of. I know nothing about the politics. There, oh, there's a movie about it. Um, it's the guy who made I'm gonna get you sucker or whatever. Or uh, King Ivory Wayans. Yeah. No, I think he made a movie about like. The king of black exploitation. I forget what it's called. Well, like, I'm gonna get you, sucker. Was a parody of black. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he so. made another movie. I want to say that's like about the like the king of it. It's like it's just called like badass or something. Okay. I forget. I, I don't know. It's been a while. No, I get why. It's called. I saw the best. The best thing to ever come out of black exploitation. Though, did I die? I, I just fall. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, tails got you. This garbage. I mean, knuckles. You're flying on knuckles. Cool. Got him. The wind beneath. Oh, he, didn't, my he did not catch you. Oh, no, he catched me. <laughs> Uh, but the best thing I ever come up with the Simpsons when they're like, uh, like the bunch black or the oh the bunch black a bunch of blame, yeah. <laughs> Blackula, Blackula, yeah, Blackenstein, <laughs> the bunch black a bunch of blame. Right, sorry to have distracted. No, it's cool. Right. For the sake of the audience, I'm glad you. Uh, anyway, Black Shampoo, uh, marvelous film. It opens with uh, I don't remember his name. Sadly, it's not black. It's not King like Ivory wins. No, nah, that the main the main character who is not good at acting, but you know you get what you pay for. Um, I meant me, not. Whatever. You didn't pay uh, anything for it. Right? Exactly. Well, I guess you did. Yeah. It's a feed. prime membership. He's watching, Twitch. This, he's watching this girl's hair. And he's getting in there, man. He's watching her hair so sensually. So she starts writhing, right? Her legs pop open. And then she just had so much of her sensual hair massage that she just, like, rolls over and starts blowing him. And I'm like, this is a sweet movie. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you were watching I that. I think you're just watching porno. Like they don't yeah. show it. That's the thing. It's, it's softcore. So it's like her head bobbing, and he's just sitting there like, mm -hmm. Those are, all right, Lawrence, this, this, this I, I have been meaning to tell you. These do not count as lessons in movies. Because you talk about how, like, you mean? Like, I feel like you always talk about these like you're educating yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning about the world and how it works. No. That's not what these are. These are just bad movies. Well, hold on, Bruce. This is, this is you <laughs> eating a Snickers for dinner. Yeah. So while... Yeah. Hold on. This is an entire <laughs> level of that shitty business thing. This is the intro. All right, I haven't gotten to the plot yet. <laughs> oh, jeez. So this other girl comes in, and she's like, I need to talk to Mr. Johnson. I think that was his name. Um, and the front desk girl's like, okay, I'll call him. She punches him up on the speakerphone, and all she hears are freaky sex noises. Oh, how embarrassing, yeah, but it's the 70s. These are, you watch porno films. <laughs> nah. Uh, so this girl's like, oh, but I need my hair done. It's been two weeks since I've had my hair done. She's talking about sex, you guys. So uh, she's like, oh, well, Mr. Johnson make house calls. I really need my hair done. So she gets her she gets her address. Mr. Johnson finishes banging that one girl. Goes out. This girl's like, hey, this girl asked for a house call. And Mr. Johnson's like, how old is she? Nice. All right, I'll go. <laughs> so he gets in his car, drives over there. Walks in, asks for this lady. Her two daughters come up. What? That's right, two daughters. Uh, and they take, they're like in bikinis because she has a pool or whatever. Lawrence, this is a porno. <laughs> yeah, this and is a porno. You watch the porno. They're like giggling and they immediately take their tops off. And they're like, hey, let's have sex. Did and you he's watch like, this with your girlfriend? Yeah, she was in the room. 
Um, well, wait, was she watching though? She picked it. Uh, <laughs> I feel like you have a you have like a superpower to find the porno in any situation. <laughs> like it's not hard, Omar. <laughs> you're I, on. You're on like or it is PBS. Hard. Com or Someone's hard. Find the porno. How do I find the porn? Uh, it's no, it's in porn. They didn't show any penetration. You need to Just watch Bush. other films Ugh. that you haven't seen that a lot of people like, like Rocky. <laughs> Or I've seen all the Rocky. Godfather. Uh, I love Rocky. I haven't seen Godfather. Have you seen, all, have you seen Rambo? First, yes. Have you seen, you've seen First Blood? I've seen all the Rambos. Okay, good. What other movies haven't you seen? You just Godfather. named God I haven't seen Godfather. You need to watch one and two. Don't what watch about, two. Hold on a minute. Sport. I've seen Bloodsport. I've seen all the blood sports actually. Of course he's seen Bloodsport. <laughs> oh no, wait. It was it's like his Bible. No, 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 wait. I've seen all the kickboxers. Because that's the one that like the second one and on, and it's the guy from Step by Step. Anyway, um, so here's the deal, right? This dude's got two two young ladies. Rubbing all Why over. Are you him. still wow. explaining the plot of a porno film? Because it gets better. <laughs> then the mom comes out with a belt and she like swats her kids away. Like, get away from him. He's mine. Is there hard netting? No. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no, there is. Hold on. Yeah, because we only have four minutes. Shit. I'll say this is hard netting. Um, the daughters fall in the pool and she's like, "This is mama's house." And she like takes off her underwear and starts fucking him right there in front of her this daughter. It's just a porno. You didn't see any penetration. It's not porn. <laughs> I mean, it's softcore that, pornography. You have to actually see it go in for it to be porn. Yeah. No, it's called softcore porn. Well, it wasn't hot enough to be that though. I guess it was just bad then. I mean, yes. I guess whatever's hot enough is determined to the user. Yeah, you just watched a bad porno movie. <laughs> That's all you watched. It wasn't porn. There would have been like more fucking. It would have been better. <laughs> Get Damn, to the hard netting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> here we go. I gotta pull <laughs> up chaos emerald. What? You knew that was there? Yeah. What do you play? Adam's really good at Sonic. Uh, Fuck, fucked it up. <laughs> no, you got it. That's all right. I'm learning. Let me pull up the results from last while. week. So as you'll recall, it was a tie. Oh, yeah, straw poll. It was a tie between uh, Ooh, the Guardians slash Knuckles extended family tree. Brotherhood of the Guardian. Brotherhood of the Guardian. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and oh, somebody in somebody in the jump. post show actually laid out the whole the whole story of what happened there. The gentleman that created Knuckles lineage. Uh, was like either dismissed or quit the the comic books. He sued Sega oh, no. for the rights to Knuckles Family Tree, one, and then started a side story of his own Knuckles verse. Oh, so that's, uh, that's the that's that is hard netting. And we were arguing about that last time, and I feel like that is absolutely hard netting. Well, Bruce, you're in you're in luck. Uh, I mean, I peeped before the show, but let me pull up, let me pull up the most late the latest results here, because. Uh, Last I checked, Ivan Doran had well been unseated. Really? Yeah. Come on. That's surprising Bring to hear, actually. Okay, so here we go. You, the, it, the public will only give them so many weeks. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And that's part of it. That's part of it. Yeah. So at 58% to 42%, uh, the Brotherhood of Guardians has won over Ivan Doran. So Ivan Doran, you netted very hard. You had a, a, a run worthy of Big Knee Lover. But now <laughs> Knuckles Family Tree, is it's like the Echidnia uh, is what it's called. It's Echidna? No, it's Echid apostrophe NYA. As I think, what the new, the, the Knuckles legacy, with the Sonic IP extracted is oh now called. Oh my gosh! I have Someone's to look. I'm gonna up. beat you up. <laughs> it's probably gonna be me. <laughs> but uh, let me see here. I got. Let me look up my little, my little, little thing here of all my hard netting, hard oh, netting contendents. He doesn't care. I, I know. Yeah, Knuckles, we'll Knuckles don't give a shit. We'll go with Lizard, Lizard Force. Can you can you pause that real quick? What do you mean? Uh, okay, never mind. Can't pause Sonic or Knuckles. He's too fast. Damn it. You can play while he's doing that. Oh, no, you can't. can't. <laughs> yeah. Gave up on me. So let's see here. Just like my mother. <laughs> Taking away my Knuckles. It's weird that that game made me more dizzy. You're not typing any, anything. Like, 3D. It made me sick to my stomach. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it at all. All right. So it's squaring up against Lizard Force. What's Lizard Force? I mean, it's pretty self explanatory. Oh, sweet. That's a dinosaur. That's a T Rex. He's a lizard. Holy shit. So, so this, how, is this. Related to Lizard Squad. Play that video. I don't think so. So Lizard Force is- Stop motion! Oh, this is fucking awesome. Lizard Force is a series of cool dinosaurs that are in tactical gear. Yeah. And I mean like full 2017 tactical army man gear. I dig it. Uh, they weird. have human hands for some reason. <laughs> and uh- They gotta hold guns. They, uh, Man! There's a series of photoshops of them in various battle- battle areas. I mean those aren't photoshops, that's someone I mean, setting up a set and taking pictures. <laughs> I guess you're right, yeah. Oh, Trump! Yeah, there's a Trump there's Rex a politician oh. lizard. Yeah, T Rump. T Rump, yeah. <laughs> so it's an Instagram account. Lizard <laughs> on <laughs> GoPro. Little tiny GoPro. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's got a claymore in his mouth. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> Holy shit, this is awesome. Yeah, that's cool. 
So this is like special forces, but with T-Rex or lizards. A little rhino. Like That's a, a triceratops. His horns are is popping through his helmet there. Yeah. Or it's maybe a mini gun. So yeah, these are these are the rudest, crudest lizard dudes <laughs> that have ever. Wait, go back to. Did there was like a little flame coming out of the gun? Yeah. Man, this is, well, this that's is a really that's a muzzle awesome. flash. Yeah. Oh, that may have been photoshopped. Yeah, but still, <laughs> the attention to detail. Yeah. This has twelve thousand followers. Needs uh, more. Yeah. It that's, does, does need more. Just yeah, just as an anecdote, not not that not that hard netting prides itself on being, uh, like obscure. under the radar or anything obscure. Yeah, but there's a lot of memey stuff on the internet that is made to be meme tacular. And if it has a large following, odds are it's pretty self-aware. I want to find the pure expressions of, and and this is pretty meme tacular too, but it, it hasn't blown up yet, so cool. whatever. Well, it's basically like a live-action cartoon. Who's that Ooh, fucker? Yeah, who's that person? Undercover lizard. Burgundy bloody. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe he turns. Is he this is a guy. A it's the, it, yeah, because it's hashtag Burgundy blood versus hashtag Lizard Force. So that's their bad guy. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> also, that sets up the narrative that there are tiny lizards and these giant lizards. Oh yeah, in the same in the universe. Same world. Oh, how does, how does uh, man? It's like talking dogs in cartoons versus non-talking dogs. Yeah, it's it's basically like they made a cartoon but with just action figures, kind of like Robot Chicken but with T Rexes. Whoa! Nope, and oh, is she the trying to get those followers? Nice. Cool. Play that video. Oh, oh sorry. We're on dickheads. Wu Is he playing an instrument? That's no, Wu Tang, man. Oh yeah, Wu Tang yeah, Fridays. Contact ID now. <laughs> it's gonna be hard with all the yeah, Sonic it's... music in the background. <laughs> okay. The cacophony of Sonic <laughs> chip cool. tune is gonna. Well, I'm ready to off. vote. <laughs> oh, what? Donkey. Donkey insurgency. Looks like a job for Lizard Force. Hashtag Lizard Force. Hashtag Proxy War. Hashtag tactical, hashtag donkey, donkey, hashtag donkey, donkey of the, the day. day, hashtag AK47, hashtag Make America Great Again, hashtag RT, <laughs> hashtag Win, uh -oh. hashtag Free. What, are you, what can you win? I don't know. Play the video. Oh, oh no. Uh oh. That's like a turn. Yeah, what is the political leaning of, of Lizard Force? Lizard Force. <laughs> Obviously, that's the political leaning. He's, he's in, uh, maybe that was North Korea. I don't know that. I think, that these, are, I think that these are soldiers with no nation, Omar. I don't think that they Mercenaries? have a. I mean, they just show up and they get the job done. That's Lizard Force. Hmm. Ugh, what are you? It's like a better version of the A team. <laughs> a better version. Wow. All right. There is a lot of time put into this. I like yeah. this a lot. It just keeps going and going. Oh, man. Oh, whoa. oh, he's gonna How fire a minigun. Whoa. That was it. That was. Whoa. I mean, that, that was took fast. that Hold took on. a while though. <laughs> oh, there we go. Mind. I fucked it up. <laughs> Stop motion animation. Yeah. So cool. His Stop look. Cool. Just the, what have you done? <laughs> Man, that's so cool. Wow, I want this to be real. It All is right. real, look. This has got to be some kind of like viral. Yeah. This is going to be on Adult Swim at some point or something. Hopefully. Your mankind and sausages. Sweet. How many pictures? Oh, only 80 posts, okay. I'm going to fucking... Turn off Sonic. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's off for the stream. It'll be off for us too. I hate that music. It's not supposed to be like that. It makes me want to kill myself. It, it lost like half the instruments at some point and they you, never came didn't back. You, you're the one who installed mods though that made it all knuckles and you're surprised that the music's bad? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's weird. Also, you guys want to hear something cool? Yes. Deck's not recording. Oh, Whatever. Well, um, we're streaming. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to do it with this. Oh no. Yeah, that, that was a major fuck up on my part. <laughs> oh well. Uh, hard nothing. Who you guys want to vote for? Um, I'm voting for Lizard Force. Ditto. All the way. Okay. Omar? Yeah, shit. What was the other one? <laughs> uh, yeah, you made, it. it made you forget. It was yeah, Knuckles. Yeah, no, no, this it was one. Knuckles this Family Tree. Awesome. All right. We, we all tuned out. It was <laughs> Knuckles Family Tree. I, while I love Knuckles, uh, it's got to be Lizard Force. Lizard Force, uh, here's the only problem. It's got 12,000 followers. So that seems like a lot. I feel like there should be, uh, it should only be like 500 followers. Click its Facebook page. I want to find out how many people are on its Facebook page. Um, come on. Come on, Lizard Force Facebook. Th that can't, it, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how popular they are. No? Yeah. Oh, look at the effort put into this. Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of effort, but there's a lot of effort putting yeah, that don't let, family don't, tree. Don't let other people's f f uh, opinions sway your own. <laughs> you know? Just because the popular kid's popular doesn't mean it's good. It's true. It doesn't mean it's bad. That's it's also a, true. I know. But I'm just saying, let your opinion be yours. What the fuck is this? Facebook. It's I'm the worst. Fucking trying to go to Lizard Force on you Facebook. You can't look at it without logging in at all. I don't know. Why do I have to security Never check? Never mind. I vote for Lizard Force. <laughs> there we go. Oh, okay. Fuck. How many likes? Uh, 727. Okay, that's more like it. Now we're talking. Look we're at this the whole movie that's happening right now. Yeah, we're in on the ground floor of this. Look at that. Oh, an old lizard. <laughs> you see him nod? 
Wow, all right. Oh, they just fist bumped. Yeah, they win. All right. Pretty they fucking win. sweet. Oh there you go. They win. Blizzard Force uh, has taken it away. Damn. Knuckles, you had your time in the, in the sun, but now it's done. Get fucked, Knuckles. <laughs> and that'll do it for this week's podcast. Post show is coming up shortly. Uh, please stay tuned for that. We're going to look at some fan art. We're going to answer some questions. And uh, we're going to give people serious life advice because we're qualified to do that. Uh, and thank you for watching this week. Um, I'm, di I'm diagramming this out in my head. The podcast may have to go out with a bunch of annoying Sonic shit in the background. Uh, there's no way not to. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think about it. Oh, that sucks real bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. At least it's going to be real quiet, so... Yeah. <laughs> Unless the webcam recording has audio in it. No. Odds are low. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, we'll be back soon. Um, and thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for enduring the... The consistent single technical problems that happen every fucking week. Because... <laughs> There's it wasn't the set's fault. Yeah, no, it wasn't. This time. <laughs> nope. It turns out that it was... Human error. Yeah, because there's 18 things to do, and the webcam broke right before we went live. And, uh, it was just, and my back is broken. <laughs> so it's it's fun. It's, it's like fun Batman. out there. Yep. He's like Batman. I just need some cyber so brace. so very tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll be right back, guys. <laughs> so defeated. <laughs> And I know there's always going to be the, the internet darlings like The Witcher and other games where like people oh, point yeah. at it and go, see, they did it right. It's like, sure. <laughs> um, but not every game can do that. And not every, you know, it's it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I understand someone having to make a buck. That's why we have prostitutes and that's why we have strippers. They need, everyone needs to make money. 